Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've told stories in English. So today, I'll be telling all my short stories in English instead of Hmong. But don't worry, I'll be alternating back and forth with the languages. With that being said, let's begin. The sun dips low on the horizon casting long shadows through the trees of the Devil's Tramping Ground in North Carolina. I glanced nervously at my watch, realizing I had lost track of time. Nightfall was approaching fast, and I was still sleeping within the heart of the forest. I've always been warned to stay away from Devil's Tramping Ground campsite. It was said that those who enter never return the same. That's if they return at all. But curiosity got the better of me, and I had ventured in, eager to explore the mysteries hidden within these ancient trees. As darkness settled in the thick blanket over me, I quickened my pace, hoping to find my way out before it was too late. But the forest seems to be shifting and changing, the trees twisting and turning on themselves, leading me further into the depth of the forest. A chill wind whispered through the branches, sending shivers down my spine. I wrapped my arms around myself, trying to ward off the cold, but it seems to be seeping into my bones, filling me with the icy dread. And then suddenly, I heard it, a soft, haunting melody drifting through the air. It was a beautiful yet chilling, like the songs of the sirens. I followed the sound, unable to resist it, until I stumbled upon a clear path in the moonlight. In the center of the clearing stood a figure cloaked in shadow their face hidden beneath a tangle of black hair. It looked at me with a gnarling smile. The hands were so bony. The voice is so low and raspy. Come closer. It murmured, its voice sending a shiver up my spine. I have something to show you. I hesitated my heart pounding in my chest. But curiosity overcame fear, and I stepped forward, drawing myself towards the mysterious figure. As I drew closer, the figure began to change, its form shifting and wrapping before my eyes, shadows dancing across its face, revealing glimpse of something dark and malevolent lurking beneath the surface. I stumbled backwards in horror, but it was too late. The figure lunged forward, its claws slashing through the air as it descended upon me with a plumbery fury. I screamed, the sound echoing through the forest as I fought deeplessly to break free. But the creature was relentless. It grips like iron as it dragged me deeper into the darkness. I struggled to free myself, my mind reeling with terror as I realized the truth. I was not the first to fall prey to the devil's tramping ground. Nor was I the last. It was the place of nightmare, a realm where reality and illusions merge, trapping unsuspecting souls in its grasp. As the creature's claws closed in around me, I closed my eye and began to pray. Then all of a sudden, I woke up. It was all a dream. I believe this dream is telling me that I need to get out of here. I have to immediately leave Devil's Tramping Campground. The road stretched out before me as I guide my truck down the highway. It was a lonely job, driving through the night with only the hum of the engine for company. But it was a living, and it puts food on the table for my family. 
as I cruise along, lost in my thoughts, a sudden jolt shook me from my veers. I glanced into the rear rear mirror to see the plum of the smoke rising from the back wheel of my truck. Cursing under my breath, I eased off the gas and guided to the ridge onto the shoulders of the road. I climbed down from the cab and approached the wheel. Looking at it, I saw the damage. The tire was blown out, shredded rubber scattering across the asphalt like confettis. It was a mess, and it was going to take me some time to fix it. I reached for my phone to call for help, but a sinking feeling washed over me as I realized I had no signal. I was in the middle of nowhere, with no one but myself to rely on. Signing heavily, I retrieved the spare tire from the back of the truck and set to work changing it. The night was quiet around me. The only sound, the only occasional passing cars on the highway. But as I worked, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The hairs on my back and my neck stood on its end. I tried to push the feeling aside, chalking up the nerves, but as I finished changing the tire and climbing back into the cab, a chill ran down my spine. And there it was, standing in the glowing of my headlights. It was a figure, a dark, gruesome figure, standing right before my truck. My heart skipped a beat as I stared, my mind struggling to make sense of what I'm seeing. The figure was skeleton-like, almost like a mummified mummy, just standing there, not making any movement. I blinked, thinking it was a thick of light. But when I opened my eyes, the figure was still there, gazing at me as if it wants to pounce on me. I said to the thing, who are you? My voice barely a whisper. The figure said nothing, but its eyes glowing red. My palms became sweaty. My voice was shaken up. I had heard stories of ghosts hunting the highways, of truckers disappearing without a trace, their ridges found abandoned on the side of the road. But I never believed them dismissing them as nothing more than tall tales. Yet, here I was, face to face with something beyond my understanding, something that made my blood ran cold. I fumbled for my keys, my hands trembling as I tried to start up the engine. But when I turned the keys, there was nothing, only the hollow clicks of a dead battery. Panic rose in my chest as I realized I was trapped. Along the side of the road with nowhere to run, the figure drew closer, its movement so slow and delicate, like a predator stalking its prey. I closed my eyes, praying for anything, but when I opened them again, the figure was gone, vanished into the night like a ghostly wisp of smoke. I sat there in the darkness, the only sound, the pounding of my heart in my ears. I didn't know what I had seen, whether it's a trick of my mind or something more scarier. But one thing was for certain, I will never look at this highway the same ever again. And I will definitely not come through this highway ever again too. I never imagined babysitting would lead me down a path of fear and uncertainty, but that night changed everything. My American friend's family had asked me to watch their two-year-old while they go off and enjoy the night. Excited for the opportunity to earn some extra cash, I eager to accept the responsibility. As the sun dipped down, casting long shadows throughout the house, I settled in with the baby, hoping for a peaceful evening. Little did I know, peace would be the furthest thing from my grasp. At first, everything seems normal. 
The baby giggled and cooed as I played with her. Her chubby fingers reached out to grasp the toys and scatter them across the floor. But as the night rose, a sense of unease settled over me, a feeling of being watched. I tried to shake off the feeling, the nervousness, but when the baby's laughter turned into pointing and giggling and looking at the dark corner of the room, my blood ran cold. I followed her gaze, but there was nothing there, just the empty expanse of the room bathed in shadow. Yet the baby continued to stare, her eyes fixed on something that I could not see. Her laughter grew more intense with each passing moment. Fear gripped me like a vice as I watched her crawl towards the corner her tiny hands reaching out as if it was touching something unseen. I wanted to run, to flee from whatever sinister presence lurking in that dark corner, but I couldn't just leave the baby alone. With trembling hands, I scooped her out and fled to her room, locking the door behind me as I sought refuge in the safe place of the baby's nursery. But even there, I could feel the weight of the darkness pressing in, threatening to consume the both of us. I huddled with the baby in my arms, praying for the hours to pass quickly, for the owners to return and relieve me from my burden. But each tick of the clock seems to stretch on for an eternity. And then, just when I thought I couldn't bear it any longer, I heard the sound of the front door opening, the voices of the owners drifting through the air. Relief flooded through me as I rushed to greet them, eager to escape the nightmare that had became my reality. But as I handed the baby back to the parents, I couldn't shake the feeling that something is lingering in this house. Something scary, something that would not cross over.